Hello and welcome to Digital Learning in a Globalizing World course introduction video. My name is Elan Paulson and I'm your instructor for the course. As I mentioned in the course overview video, the central questions that we will consider in this course are, how has digital learning shaped the globalizing world? And conversely, how has the globalizing world shaped and reshaped digital learning? In week one of the course, I will provide a, a content overview of the course. However, this video is geared more towards the, the hows of the course rather than the, the what. So I'm providing an introduction to course organization and administration. First, I will share with you the outcomes of the course, summarize how the course was designed, and overview the course workload and organization. I'll then provide a brief glimpse into the course materials, the course assignments, and the Mahara ePortfolio. More information about all of these elements are available on Sakai. I'll also clarify where to go, either in Sakai or Mahara, for which aspects of the course. Finally, I'll conclude with sharing some expectations for you and for me, and alert you to, to some to-dos for the first week of the course. All of this information is available on the course syllabus, so the first thing I encourage you to do following this video is to download the finalized version and to read it. So the course outcomes. By the end of the course, students will be able to consider from a range of perspectives key issues and questions related to digital learning in a globalizing world, to become familiar with a selection of frames, policies, initiatives, theories, pedagogical strategies, and technologies related to digital education in international and intercultural teaching and learning contexts, to create an e-portfolio and various artifacts, including an e-learning assessment and a video that features an e-learning tool, and to develop a proficiency with the Mahara ePortfolio tool that anticipates its further use in subsequent courses. As this is your own learning journey, you are encouraged to bring your own ideas, references, prior knowledge, and practical experience to course discussion and assignments. You're also encouraged to uh, describe and recommend various educational technologies that you've used in the past. Finally, you're encouraged to receive, reflect on, and learn from the observations of your peers. The course has been designed and structured with the fact that it takes place over the summer, which means that there's going to be a little less discussion and a little more focus on the ePortfolio skill development with the plan that you'll return to more uh, discussion-oriented courses in the fall and winter. Uh, it's also been designed considering the fact that students have different levels of knowledge related to educational technologies and comfortable co and levels of comfort using educational technologies. So the two or three articles per week are meant to build knowledge and sometimes to provide contrasting views. It might seem like a lot of reading to you, but um, but the, I've chosen these articles so that because they're short, because they're relevant to you, or at least I hope they will be, and, uh, and I've also got a document on Sakai about how to effectively read academic articles. Um, so if you're a little less familiar with strategies for doing so, then please review that document. Students may have different l levels of proficiency in using new technologies, and so this course offers uh, synchronous webinars to walk students through the processes of learning some of these new technologies. Because personal schedules will vary over the summer, you won't be required to attend these, course, these uh, webinars synchronously. Rather, the live sessions will be available and they'll also be recorded so you can view them after the fact. And finally, because this is an online program and you're working in a cohort towards a capstone project, your program advisor has decided to support your learning uh, and course uh, progression with Mahara as a web-based tool that will uh, allow you to collect all of, the, all of your learning and to showcase it in, via your capstone project. I'll endeavor to provide clear expectations about each stage of the course for you, as well as um, give you reminders and be accommodating for medical and bereavement reasons. As I'd mentioned in the previous course video, all, instruct, all resources um, and are going to be online and they are free. Links and PDF documents are available all in Sakai. For the Mahara support sessions and for one assignment, you're going to be asked to procure a webcam with a computer microphone or a digital video camera. These technology requirements are listed on our program pages, which, so you're expected to have had this technology or access to it at the outset of the program. Finally, you're required to uh, 
have access to screen uh, editing software. Well, first the recording software, such as screen Screencast-O-Matic, which is uh, free. It's actually the technology that I'm using right now to record this video, uh, as well as the video editing software. So again, JCut is a free program that's available for download online. Uh, iMovie comes with any Apple or Mac uh, computer and uh, you finally will need a video hosting site uh, such as Screencast or YouTube. So uh, the access to this is in case you are having difficulty uploading your video on directly onto your ePortfolio. There are four main graded assignments in this course, each activity subsequently building on the, the, the one previous. The first is a weekly readings, responses and discussion. I'm expecting about a web page length per post. You'll be prompted with some reflection questions, but you're free to pursue your own interests as well. Please do focus on the texts and how they relate to your particular uh, interests and experiences. Although, on, although online communication is less formal than that of academic essays, I'm still going to expect that you write in a clear, succinct style that is grammatically correct. You will be placed in one of two reflection discussion groups so that you don't feel that you have to read and respond to everyone. Uh, the names of those groups are Williams and McLuhan and there'll be more information in the first week of the course on uh, why I've chosen those two names. Secondly, you will submit a short e-learning assessment related to one student, one classroom, or one school or organization. Based on your learning, you'll make recommendations for more effective practices, planning, and using educational technologies. In week seven, you'll submit a video created by you that describes an online tool and its pedagogical value in a particular global context. This video needs uh, to be no longer than six minutes and it doesn't need to be of professional pro uh, production quality. We're gonna talk more about this assignment in one of the webinars and I'm gonna prepare an example for you to view. Then finally, in the last week of the course, week eight, you'll submit a short essay that provides more context for the tools and research on in what ways this, uh, this learn online tool or a web-based tool or educational technology tool might be used or has been used in international and or intercultural learning contexts. So by the end of this course, you will have uploaded to the, the following into your Mahara portfolio, your e-learning workplace assessment, a rough plan for your EdTech video, which you're gonna submit in about week five for feedback from your peers, an educational technology video, and a rationale for your educational technology video. Uh, in Mahara is where you will post your response reflections and engage in discussion with your group. So in past courses, you may have used Sakai. In this week, for the first week, we're gonna use Sakai and Mahara, and then from weeks two till eight, all subsequent uh, reflections and discussion will take place in Mahara. Each week, I will ask you to complete a, f a few small tasks to familiarize yourself with Mahara. If you complete all 20 achievements by the end of the course, you'll receive a full 10% participation grade. At the end of the course, I will ask you to submit a form that indicates to me which of the achievements you've completed. They should only take between 10 and 20 minutes uh, per achievement. So to summarize, you're gonna go to Sakai each week to receive announcements, instructions, and messages. If you have questions or concerns about the course, please raise them there. You'll also be able to access readings, videos, and all other course resources in Sakai. However, you will go to Mahara to post weekly reflections and discuss them with others, to upload all of your assignments, and to complete your 20 Mahara achievements. Information about criteria for assignments and what the uh, Mahara achievements are, they're all posted in various parts of Sakai multiple times. Uh, this might seem like a lot right now, but you'll soon become familiar with the difference between an LMS, a learning management system as a place for receiving course information, and your ePortfolio as a virtual learning environment, a more dynamic and personalized place for demonstrating your learning. A word on technology in this course, I've intentionally scaled back the readings and discussion assignments in this master's level course so that you have time to explore the technologies we'll, we will use. Still, learning with and about technology takes time and patience. Those who are early adopters will already know this. Uh, Venata and Ford in their 2004 article looked at the attributes of teachers who were most successful in integrating educational technology into their classrooms. They found that those teachers who were most willing to commit time 
Most willing to, to take risks and make mistakes and most willing to be open to change were also the most likely to be successful in integrating technology into their classrooms for learning. These traits apply, I believe, to learning new technologies as students in an online program as well. And I encourage you to try to make time for technology exploration, take risks, and be okay with artifacts that at first might not be up to your standards. And also, and finally, be open to new ways of demonstrating your learning in this course from the more traditional academic uh, discussion and essays uh, to which you're more likely accustomed. If you don't already realize this by now, attitude makes all the difference when it comes to one gets out of online learning. So please do pay attention to that uh, over the course. If you find yourself confused or frustrated with the technology, please take a break, which means leaving your computer entirely for a few minutes. Next, to troubleshoot a problem, undo and redo your last step. Keep multiple backup copies of your work. And finally, ask for help if you need it. Try to use a help feature, do a Google search on your own, or ask a peer. If you can't find an answer through these resources, then contact me or the eLearning and Technology Center for support. Here are some expectations that I have of you during our course and our time together. Please complete readings, viewings, and assignments on time as soon as possible each week if you can. Maintain a respectful and collegial tone in all messages where critiquing ideas and not the people themselves. Strive to find answers to questions on your own or with peers before you contact me or the office. However, I insist that you contact me directly if you have a question, a concern, a problem, or a request, rather than the graduate program's office. Finally, I expect original, that is not plagiarized, work that is correctly formatted as per APA style. If you have questions about plagiarism or APA, then please contact me. In turn, you may expect that I will provide to you as a student clear and reasonable requirements and uh, assignment instructions, maintain respectful collegial communication with you at all times, make a reasonable effort to make course information available to you to anticipate your questions, uh, to respond to your inquiries on Sakara uh, on Sakai and Mahara, generally within 48 hours or less, and that includes weekends and return coursework graded and with feedback in about one week, two weeks at the latest, and ensure that uh, grades adhere to faculty and university policies. So there's lots to do this first week, but this introductory work takes the place of the normal course introductions. And by taking the time now, you're gonna become more quickly familiar with the setup of the course, which means less time um, being confused later. So please first download the syllabus, then read and view the required materials for this week. There is one short video and three short articles. Check your Sakai and or Mahara messages to see your discussion group name. Visit uh, the link on your computer and I'm gonna send it to you in a Sakai message to ensure your technology is up to snuff for the Illuminate session. Then look for the Illuminate link in, a mess in, in that same message and attend the Illuminate session if possible on July 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember that the introduction uh, video um, webinar is purely voluntary and will be recorded for future viewing. Then log on to Mahara and complete the reflection and discussion as well as the other Mahara achievements by Sunday night at 11 p.m. E Eastern Standard Time. Here's just another way uh, to view the activities required for you this, this first week. So download schedule, schedule syllabus and schedule find your discussion group, uh, find the information for and attend the Illuminate session if possible, uh, view, uh, view and read week one's readings, share your reflections and discussion in Sakai, post those same reflections and discussions in Mahara as well. This will be the only week that we'll have you do both just in case there's some challenges with being able to log on to Sakai. And then finally, complete the uh, required uh, two or three achievements uh, by the end of this for, of the first week uh, by Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please post any questions you might have on the Sakai forum and answer them if you have answers to those questions. If you have course-related questions, you can also message me privately in Sakai or by email. If you have a program-related question, contact Paul Tark. If you have a program administrative uh, question, contact Belinda Hamoud at the Graduate Programs Office. And if you have a Mohara question or a troubleshooting issue, then please contact the eLearning and Technology Center. Uh, just go to the Western Education website for their contact information. 
So that is it for the course introduction video. We'll see you online, everyone.